just remembered I don't have a packet mic on today. Good morning, good morning. Glad to see you all here this morning, and welcome to those who are with us online. I'm Aubrietta Jones. I'm the pastor of the First United Methodist Church of Maumelle. This is a great day. We are going to pack meals today. We're going to pack 10,000 meals, and um, it's a lot of fun. We always enjoy getting to do this. It is <clears throat> maybe like the third or fourth time. I think it's the fourth time we've done this. And so we're very excited to get to have the opportunity uh, to pack these meals uh, right here on Sunday morning. If you're worshiping with us online, I want to let you know it is an abbreviated service, but that's good news because you can uh, uh, come on down and join us anytime during the morning between 9 and 11. We're going to be here and we're going to be doing this. We have a, a special guest preacher today, Jeff Meadows of City Connections, and uh, that's the ministry that we use to make this possible. And so we're really excited about it, and it's a great opportunity for us as a congregation uh, to do good in the community. I want to let you know about some things that are coming up next Sunday. We have volunteer training lunch at noon, and uh, that's going to be especially important for people who are involved in uh, children's ministry, VBS. It's a great opportunity. So uh, we're going to be uh, it, doing that volunteer training at noon next week. And then at 3 p.m., we have our third discernment meeting about our denominational affiliation. And uh, members can speak and ask questions at that meeting. And then there is a straw poll to determine if we are going to have a final vote uh, on our denomination affiliation. So I hope you'll uh, come and be a part of that. Next week on uh, Wednesday, I believe it is also, we've got the Classics Club going to Branson to watch Esther. We went through the Book of Esther this entire spring, and now we're going to get to go see it in the theater. It's going to be a great, great day. So lots of good is, stuff is going on. Your giving information is on the screen, or will be, and the ushers will come around and collect the morning offering. And additionally, if you want to give online, you can use the QR code either on the bulletin or on the screen. And uh, we're thankful to uh, get to uh, do good in the world in tangible ways. We do a lot of good in spiritual ways. We do good in tangible ways. We are very, very thankful for the opportunity to do both. I'm going to pray, and then the ushers are going to walk around, all right? Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Holy God, we thank you and we praise you because you are faithful. You show us your faithfulness each day in the beauty of uh, the world we live in, in the love of friends and family, in the intervention of people you call who come forward to do good in the world. Uh, we thank you because you show us your faithfulness and you give us an example in Jesus Christ of how we might be faithful and how we might love and serve others and follow you uh, with our daily living. We pray, God, that you would bless our worship today and bless our serving today. Bless uh, Jeff Metters as he brings the message. We pray that you would bless us as we pack these meals. We pray, God, that the people that receive these meals would feel that they know your love more deeply and more fully because of what we're doing today, the support and the love we're trying to show them. We thank you, God, because your love knows no bounds, even to the point of your son dying on the cross for us and opening the way of salvation for all of us. Uh, so, Lord, we offer you this service for your glory and your honor. We thank you for your presence in this place. And we are grateful, God, to be a part of what you do in the world. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Please rise and join us as we sing praises this morning. Walking the wayside, lost on a lonely road. I was chasing the high line, trying to satisfy my soul. All the lies I believed in left me crying like the rain. Then I saw lightning from heaven. And I fell the bed the same. I'm gonna climb. 
have a mountain, I'm going to shout about it. I am a child of birth. I found the word of freedom. I found the friend of Jesus. I am a child of love. I felt the sting of the fire, but I saw you in the flames. Just when I thought it was over. I'm gonna shout about it I am a child of love I found the word of freedom I found the friend of Jesus I am a child of love Yeah Oh I am a child of love Jeff Metters to come up again. Jeff Metters is uh, the director of City Connections. We're very, very thankful for his ministry, for all the good that he does as he helps people pack meals all across uh, central Arkansas, maybe beyond for all I know. Maybe he'll tell us. Anyway, Jeff, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Um, I've got a short message for you this morning, and I have an official change to begin with. Um, last time I was with you, I had you hold up uh, four fingers. So hold up four fingers. I had you hold up four fingers, and I told you that one in four children in Arkansas is food insecure, but that is no longer correct. Now it's, my, my hand didn't work right, sorry. It now it's three. One in three children in central Arkansas, or in, in Arkansas, in our state, is food insecure, and so the need is as big as ever. And so thank you today for showing up to serve and to love your neighbor, because uh, that was a pretty big deal to Jesus. You know, the what's the greatest commandment, kids? To love God and to love your neighbor, or thy neighbor. We got a King James child on the front row. Give it up. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know y'all did that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, and if it's important to Jesus, who should it be important to? To us, right? So I will, I've just got a, uh, a short message to give you this morning, which is, you know, Mostly a lie because no preacher can give a short message, but I'll give, you, I'll give it a try. Here, here we go. <clears throat> what is your favorite word? Turn to your neighbor and tell him your favorite word. It can either be because you love the meaning or you just love to say the word. Here's a couple of examples. 
Is your favorite word marmalade? Is your favorite word hootenanny? Some of you, I can tell your favorite word is biscuit. Turn to your neighbor and tell them your favorite word. Some of you are like, I love all the words just the same. I'm too mature. All right, so one of my favorite words is the word juxtaposition. J-U-X-T-A and then position. Juxtaposition. Anytime unlike things bump up against each other, you can describe it as a juxtaposition. Now here's where we find a beautiful juxtaposition in God's Word. James chapter 1, verse 27. The Bible says this, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So, the juxtaposition that we find here in this passage is when religion and neighbor care bump up against each other. And that doesn't sound too weird to you because you have only lived in the age of grace. But put yourself in the first century for a moment and consider that <clears throat> from the beginning of the world up until the arrival of Jesus Christ, the word religion meant going to a certain place at a certain time and doing certain things in certain ways. This is how you would draw near to God. In ancient Judaism, when you want to draw near to God, you go to a certain place at a certain time and do certain things in certain ways. In Islam, even today, you go to a certain place at a certain time and do certain things in certain ways. If you're a Hindu, you go to a certain place at a certain time and do certain things in certain ways. If you're a Buddhist, you go to a certain place at a certain time and do certain things in certain ways. That's what the word religion means. That's what it always meant. Back then... And now for everyone but us Christians, for followers of Jesus, we don't have a certain place to go at a certain time to do certain things in certain ways in order to draw near to God because where does the Holy Spirit live, kids? Yeah, right inside of you. So it goes where you go. You have become a holy place, the container for the very presence of God. And he goes where you go. So be careful, little feet, where you go. Do y'all sing that song? Did you sing that song? Well, you're not old, because I did, by golly. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the word religion always meant going to some sacred place, saying sacred words in a sacred way, but not in this age of grace. Pure religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is not about formal rituals, or reverent recitations, not about holy phrases or sacred places. It's not pageantry or pious posture that God desires. It is instead, it is instead a rugged commitment to caring for the most vulnerable people in society that God is looking for looking after orphans and widows in their distress, and not buying in to the world's empty values. And that's a whole nother sermon, but simply put, worldly values can be defined as self-love, as selfishness. We need to care for others and forget ourselves, surrender ourselves to the kingdom of God, to the will of God. James, the author of this book, we think was Jesus' brother, who was a leader in the Jerusalem church, James is calling me. James is calling you. James is calling us to express our devotion to God by helping our neighbors in need. Our service to others, hear me now, our service, our holy act of worship in this age that we live in, is service to others, and service to others is a holy endeavor. If anyone was counting, this is what counts. Service to others is a holy endeavor. This is what drawing near to God looks like in this age of grace. May our religion always be pure and faultless. 
if you desire to experience the divine presence of God, I encourage you to obey him. And in the midst of doing his will, giving him what he has asked of you, you will find yourself in a holy moment. That is my prayer for you today. Let us pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you, Jeff. That was a great message. All right, friends, uh, the service is just about to conclude. Stand. I'm going to give you a benediction, and then we're going to be going to work. Go forth to love and serve God and your neighbor. Not to say you love your neighbor, not to say you love God, but put hands and feet to it. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. All right, we're getting to work.